K-Wave 6 Radio and our host, Kirk Spencer, welcome you to our show, bringing positive messages to today's world. And now, here's Kirk. Hello and welcome to K-Wave 6 Radio. I have a guest today who I've had on the previous show, Your Thoughts, Your Reality, and... Um, he is back again. This guy is so multi-talented, and he, for some people you might say he spreads himself very thin. Uh, I had to go back in LinkedIn just to actually find out exactly what he does, and I know I'm going to only cover some of it, because that's even in LinkedIn and my account. i only tell you a little bit about what I do. But here's a man who is a comedian. He's on the road right now, traveling around. And he's a comedian, and his name of his show is Never Repeat a Joke. He is also a columnist with the Arab Daily News. He is a novelist. He is a scriptwriter. He's a book dealer and a filmmaker. He's also a graduate of the University of Jordan over in the Middle East, so don't go looking on your map for something in the U.S. This man is very talented, very funny, and he's very, very intelligent. Today I'm, bring, bleh, I'm bringing back Ramsey Swice, and he's going to tell us about uh, his experiences and his knowledge with what we call, in the, through the media, rad, uh, radical Islam. So, with that, welcome back to our show, to the new show, Ramsey Swice. Well, thank you, Mr. Uh, William Kirk William Spencer. Um, that was very heartwarming. Uh, gesture, and um, I feel very welcome. Um, so yeah, the way that you put it, uh, radical Islam is is um, really the only way it sh- it should be put. Um, you know, if to be um, people say politically correct, but to be to be um, you know, um, verna- you know, um, literally correct. Um, you know the way that the way that some um, of the radical, some of the extremists or the um, the radicalists are behaving is um, it, yeah, it's just it's it, it's it's um, it's uh, you know it's it's just for the hype and it, you know it's and it's radical and it's not it's not put that way often but um, that's how it, they should be referred to. Uh, we shouldn't give them too much credit, you know. Well, what do you mean by not giving them too much credit? Um, well, um, there's a lot of hype. You know, Obama said first that, you know, we're giving them too much hype, and, and now he said that uh, we that the um, that the um, that the 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 people that are fighting them um, overestimated them, or no? They, I think they said that we're overestimating, overestimating, and that uh, America's underestimating. Um, but um, I, um, I, you know, I, I, I don't think that we should uh, give them too much. Uh, notoriety because that's exactly what they want um, after all these bombings in the last you know six seven days you know they're saying that we haven't put a dent in their cause which is um, you know for them just to say that you know obviously um, you know for them to put out a message you know there must be a reason so I, I think that the, the I think Obama is the perfect man for the job and um, I think the less the less that we inflate their ego, the more that it'll deflate. All right, before we go on, there's something I don't think I mentioned at the beginning of the show, and I do want to mention it now at least, at least I know that I said it, is that this is not a show about bashing Islam. It is not about trying to uh, point a finger at anybody other than those who are stirring the pot, if you will, because Mm -hmm. I've grown up with, as I've told Ramsey off air, I've grown up with a great deal of Muslims in my lifetime, and this was all pre, well, it was pre, what's his name, um, who, da, 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 
the first, well, the last president of uh, Iraq, the one that Assad, Netanyahu. No, no, no. no. Iraq, um, Iraq. Gaddafi, no. Gaddafi. Iraq. Hussein. Oh, what's his name? Anyway. Oh, Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. There you go. Couldn't think of Saddam. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, <laughs> this is all confused. before then. Yeah, and it, uh, basically, my knowledge, my experience with people who are Muslims have been, at least in the United States, uh, they've generally just been peaceful people. Now, whether or not they were sitting back and planning anything before all that, I have no idea. But I'm talking about stuff back from the 90s and the 80s and even further back than that. It was just, they're just another group of people that had their own culture and their own religion, and they were living peacefully with everybody else in the area. Mm Mm-hmm. Fine. It was cool. I had no problem with that. Now, with uh, the U.S. stirring up and uh, U.S. and all these Western allies stirring up as even, what's his name, George Carlin, your comedian, you probably know this one. We only bomb brown people. Okay? <laughs> so. George Clooney, he, he married a, an Arab woman yes, last night in yeah. Italy. Yeah, no, I'm talking about George Carlin, the comedian. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Not George Clooney. Really <laughs> yeah, I know he That's married. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, I, I must say that, um, you know, there's only, some people say it's uh, it's like 6% um, Christian in the Middle East. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure of the numbers, if it's under 10 or whatever. But um, I just wanted to just, just to say that um, I'm not Muslim just because, you know, when you have a um, a certain minority or or um, you know like if a Spanish guy goes into a Spanish if a guy goes into a Spanish store like a taco store and starts speaking uh, Spanish you know he's probably going to get like a free cookie or a discount or you know they you know these minorities stick together you know yeah I'm Arab if I go to uh, you know a Christian Arab subway or or something like that. Um, you know, the guy's gonna give me a free, uh, probably gonna give me a free Pepsi, you know, or something. There's some kind of a connect, yeah. Uh, some kind of a click, which mm-hmm. is. Um, well, the other side know, of that is, as far as populations are concerned, you're also basically considered a minority population, and yeah. people know that, so they realize that it's not like okay, because they're so widespread apart, it's not like walking into, uh, well. Let's say, what was his last one? Hobby Lobby. Okay, they're Christian, and it's a Christian-owned business, and they had that big thing in the court system just this past summer, I think it was, mm. or spring. And uh, you, not, you couldn't walk in there as a American Christian and expect a discount from them. <laughs> okay. mm. Yeah, so it, it's because you're part of a smaller minority, and it's, hey, I'm glad to see somebody here just like me. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a little bit like high school. We're becoming more of a melting pot where, you know, everyone's equal and we're, you know, we're infusing. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, in, in the Middle East, um, when I, I just got back from there Friday, um, you know, I went to a dentist and they said, you know, specifically said it's 20, it'll be 20 JD. You know, I, I go to pay, I pull out the 20 JD, I have 60 in my hand. And they're like, yeah, it's 60, it's not 20. And right. just because they saw that I had that much money, they wouldn't let me leave unless I gave them everything in my pocket. And I did not feel safe there, um, you know, not even in 2005 to 2007, the two years that I went to school there. And again, I'm not bashing. It's just that um, I just I, I just didn't feel safe. Um, the way that The way that they would take advantage of... You know, when they see when they see movies, when they see when they talk about America, they think about the movies, and they don't know how to they don't know how to uh, demarcate. They don't know how to separate the illusion from the reality. Because because they're not allowed to leave the country. You know, they they go to the American embassy, um, or they they try to get a visa, and they, it's about a six year wait. Right. Uh, yeah. And so, but it's just the fact that, you know, if I want to buy a piece of gum for five cents and they charge me like 50 cents, you know, it, there's just certain things. People ask me if I work for the CIA, people, um, my own family accusing me of being a part of ISIS. 
um, mm-hmm. you know, there's just certain things where I was just like, you know, get me. I can't wait to get that to get out of here. I do not. I do not feel safe. I actually did a comedy show on 9/11. Um, you know, just just to bark up that same tree, uh-huh. and and uh, it was extremely successful. Um, I it was all in Arabic, and um, I'm part owner of a uh, of a cafe of an art cafe. And I, I wanted to live there and do comedy, you know, as often as possible because there's no, there is no comedy there, and they need it because it's, it's a lot like New York where they're all just sitting on a chair and they're just trying to, uh, to meter out, you know, their wallet and not spend much money, and and they're just sitting around telling jokes, and it's just like why not just congregate, you know, at, at a certain place, you know, there's not going to be alcohol because people yeah. would get upset. But there's there's this certain sense of jealousy where if you do something where you're better than another person, they start to gang up on you. And so the immaturity level, which I think immaturity and intelligence go hand in hand, their their immaturity level is, is so um, it, it can't get off the ground. You know, it, it's so um, it's so. Uh, it, it's so gum. It's I can't really explain it. It's like gum on your shoe. It's just like you know, just grow, grow up. Like me, me and my brother, and my dad both agree that they're at least their immaturity level or their maturity level, their IQs or their they're just their society. Their their uh, they're a third world country. I mean, some might disagree, yeah, it's like, but it's like cab, crabs in a barrel. Just by yeah, the time one gets out, somebody's years. trying to pull you back in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I say they're about about 40, 50, 60 years behind, um, you know, how sophisticated we are here or other countries, you know, just just to be civilized. Well, here's the thing. I, I'm going to throw this in. Let's see what you think of it. Uh, you have traveled a lot. I have traveled a lot. Uh, you're still traveling a lot. Uh, you're not even 30 yet, are you? Um, I I turned thir- yeah I I turned thirty one I moved to L A I turned thirty one but now, right now I'm in yeah. Nashville but yeah I'm I'm thirty one okay. yeah you've done all this and you're thirty one years old and you're still <laughs> going what you I'm quite sure you found out by this time in your life that because of your experiences in traveling in meeting people the different cultures understanding the world in a different way. A lot of people can't understand what you see and how you see it. Is that would you see that to be true? Yeah, you know, um, my the, my prom queen um, said the same thing. You know, she 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 said to me, you know, you know, I wish I could, I wish I could, I, I know what's going on inside your head, and um, but she said, you know, you know, I'll, I'll never know uh, unless I'm you. Or but but yeah, I mean, you know, I guess I kind of pound my chest and and I. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm humble, but um, I, I'm, I'm a, I believe in socialism and libertarian, you know, being in liberty and humanity and phil- philanthropy, um, and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot that you learn, you know, being around so many thousands and, and, and hundreds of thousands of, of different mentalities. Um, there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that you pick up, and and uh, in Latin they call it nasi ti iptum, which is know thyself, and um, and I think that that's the key to you know to a to a to a um, to a um, you know a higher dimension of of uh, consciousness of um, of just being able to you know live in in harmony. Mm-hmm. We're going to take our first break right here, and we're going to come back with a question for Ramsey Swice, my guest today, as soon as we come back. So please stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Hello, this is Andy Peacher from Freedom Talk Radio. You're listening to Kirk Spencer on K-Wave 6 Radio. Hi, this is Pat Kammer, author of Love's Voice Changes You, book one. And I now have book two, which is called Hello Awesome, Message from Spirit in Pat's Patters. 
buy your book from Amazon.com. Hi, this is Kate McKay, the mass motivator at kate-mckay.com. You're tuned in to the amazing K-Wave 6 Radio. Welcome back. And again, my guest is Ramsey Swice, who is a Jordanian Christian, uh, a comedian, a columnist. Uh, he does a little bit of everything. <laughs> so, but before we left off, uh, Ramsey said something that may tick off some of our American listeners um, or Western listeners. And I want him to explain, in his own words, Explain, if you will, um, Ramsey, what do you mean by, I believe in socialism? Explain that uh, so we understand. Um, well, you know, there's some people that say that they're against Obama and that we should live um, with credit and, instead of money, um, that credit teaches irresponsibility. Um, I mean, that money teaches irresponsibility and that uh, we should all be held. Uh, we should all be held accountable by how responsible we are. Um, but but when I say socialism, I mean I mean that. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean you know just just living in harmony. Um, that's really you know if I were to define it in three words. Uh, I just wrote an article called Generation Z for the Arab Daily News, and it, it is just saying how, you know, kids these days um, being able to, uh, they have they have a hundred percent free will, and and being able to, um, you know, swing like a butterfly, sting like a bee, or, you know, to be themselves, and, and um, to, you know, there's no extreme parenting, and um, at least not not that you know not that I see. I mean, I'm sure there is behind closed doors, which is a, a scary thought. Yeah. But you know, socialism just in the thought that you know there's no there's no racism. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Uh, I tend to have some of the same thoughts, but I just wanted to let you say it in your own words. Socialism, from at least my point of view, and similar to yours, is is that we all have equal opportunities. We all have uh, an equal place in our society to yeah. our own abilities, and um, there. Well, <laughs> socialism, especially like what you saw in Russia, or should I say, we saw in Russia, it didn't quite work because there was always somebody that had the money, and the rest of everybody else is going, uh, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, anyhow. I mean, slamming, slamming the, having the door slammed in your face, you know, maybe you're somewhat responsible, but, I mean, you know, we're, we're, and we are allowed to stand up for ourselves, but I mean, you know, you know, to be able to trust, you know, going to a bank, you know, I think that's, that's one of the key factors, you know, and, and, you know, trust, you know, trust, trust and socialism, I think, go hand in hand, and, and, um, you know, and, and we're going, and, and my the whole point is is that we're we're veering in that direction. We're, you know, people every day uh, realize and see, and and, and uh, you know, it's it, we're we're all taking part in, in that in this in this revolution. Um, you know, and, and it's and we're all seeing how it benefits us, and it, and we're taking it step by step, and you know, and and that's that's how it's going to solidify. And, and take its own course and you know and there's there's not much we could do about it um, you know it's gonna I think it's gonna help everybody to you know like the other day I, I asked a, a guy for a quarter and he gave me four quarters and I'm like you know I almost got I, I kind of got upset I'm like I don't even need four quarters I just need one and he started laughing and um, you know it's just that kind of like you know everybody's a family um yeah. You know, that kind of socialism. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, there's something that you did write in one of your articles uh, in the Arab Daily News, 
and it kind of relates to our topic for today. And you said something about being ninety nine percent Arabic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's that? Ah, uh, well, I'm one percent Greek or Orthodox. Ah, okay. Uh, do enlighten us a little bit more. Um, well, I, I mean, that's a church that I go to. I go to a Greek Orthodox church. Ah, okay. So that's the one percent that you're talking about. That just kind of grabbed me. It's like, huh? How do you get to be 99%? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get back to our topic here. Um, what did you... Now, you said you just came back from Jordan. So, uh, explain to us or tell us about your experience there uh, just recently. Because, uh, well, recent is what most of us know. Because most of us don't know about the, the history of all of this and why. So... Can you do that at least from that point of view? What was it like recently to be in Jordan and to see and or experience whatever level of ISIS and ISIL and the radicals that are going on over there, if there is any going on over there? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, people just going out, you know, my own family asked me if, I, if I'm part of ISIS or um, that our, all Americans are homosexuals or... Um, you know, boosting the price or asking me if I work for the CIA. I, you know, I would call these people extremists, and um, that's not the reason why I did the comedy show on 9/11. Um, I even shot a promo for it, and um, um, you know, it was, it was a half an hour show. It was all in Arabic, and, and the reason, th my main drive for doing it was for, for others to get up t to see how how fun it was. You know, it's like show and tell. You know. Uh -huh. Comedy, stand up comedy is so much like someone's show and tell. And, uh, you know, I made a poster for it, and I'm going to be in um, in Arabic, a, a major newspaper on Tuesday. It's going to be in Arabic. And I met with Roya News, it's one of the major news stations. And so they have a lot of regard for America because they always think, they're always thinking that, you know, oh, if I ever go to America, I'll, I'll have. I'll have I'll have a prospect, you know. I'll, I'll have someone there that I know in the back of their mind, and so they do have a lot of um, regard for Americans. But um, one, for example, one of the days um, before I left, or the yeah, the day one of the the day before I left, um, one of so, some ministry came um, looking for me, and they're like, you know, well, what what do you think of all the pollution? Um, all the littering, and you know they and they recorded me, and um, it was it was for for a commercial, and I don't have it yet because they want to make it like a a collage, and I was basically telling them that it's it's a, you know littering in America you get fined for you know it's a sign of disrespect, and um, you know you don't go to your friend's house you don't go to your family's house. You know, and wipe your your clothes on the on the tablecloth. I mean, wipe your hands on the tablecloth, or you know, yeah. spit on the ground, or put milk, put a gum under the chair, or you know, you take off your shoes, and you know, you pick up after yourself, you clean up after yourself, because it's it's your country, it's your people, it's your roots. You know, there it's a sign of disrespect, and um, you know, the police. Are, when I was there in studying, I didn't see a single police officer. I'll be completely honest with you. And now, you know, you see a lot more police cars, a lot more um, regulation. Um, but they say that um, from Syria, there's 600,000 refugees, and a lot of them are children. And I read that 80, that um, the population has risen from 4 million to 12 million, million that it's called the dumping ground, the wow. Jordan, Jordan. Yeah. And they say, you know, where there's traffic and where there's poverty, there's going to be war. And there, there wasn't, you know, there was a lot of talk on the radio about ISIS being in Jordan, um, but there were never any shootings. The only, the only um, terror act that ever occurred there was in 2007, while I was there. And um, you might think I'm pulling your leg here, but it was actually right outside my window, and it was at the Hyatt. 
you might have heard about it. It was at a wedding, and there was a suicide bomber that walked into the wedding. And my uh, a friend of the family was a chef, um, cooking the the meals there. Mm-hmm. And he he didn't get injured, but you know he saw the the scene firsthand. And like I said, it was outside my window, so I walked to um, the Hyatt to see. You know, I you know at that point I didn't. There was never a terror act, and I didn't think it was a terror act, but I went to go see what it, what it was about. And there was an American reporter asking for an American to talk to, um, and of course I, I felt inadequate, and I, I, I you know I turned away. Um, but one of the big problems now is you know with all this traffic and with the with women um, being held in low regard, so men feel better about themselves or. The, you know, the thing that I hate about my people is that they get suspicious very quickly. Um, they get themselves in sticky, in sticky, tangled, you know, inflamed situations. And it's embarrassing um, for me, you know, being, being, being an Arab and seeing Arabs put themselves in this situation. You know, I want the best for them. You know, I, it's just in my blood and it's just, I, I can't help it. Maybe I shouldn't um, be such a pushover, or, you know. But um, but I love him. I, I love Jordan. I want to move there. I want to live there. I feel like that's that that's um, my mission in life. And um, <clears throat> so what's going on there is you know you see a lot of women. Um, they the way that they get back at um, at um, at at the men who uh, belittle them is that you know on the road. They take their own sweet time. You could honk at them. Um, you know, they drive bigger cars. Um, you know, they're they're, they're not going to get agitated. You know, it, it, it's their road. Mm-hmm. And um, but so now, what the problem is that you have a lot of men carrying weapons in their car, and um, now now the women are terrified when they drive because what happens is if you're in traffic and you're not getting out of the way, someone will pull their gun out and shoot you. And um, yeah. there's a car accident every like road rage. <laughs> yeah, there's like two car accidents a second. Um, one of my friends, he actually has a nail in his head holding some bone in place. Uh, his his leg cracked. Another one of my American friends, um, I saw him after a car accident. His bone was sticking out of his leg. It, he looked like a Smurf. His entire body was blue. Um, when it rained. There's so much dust and it's so hilly that there's just accidents everywhere. And what happens when there's an accident? It's you know it's not civ- it's not a it's a third world country, and so there's no insurance companies. Um, they just come out and they're like, yeah, they assess the damage themselves, and they said, you know, you know, it's my fault. I'll give you you know 50 bucks, and we'll, let's just call it a deal. And that's that's usually what happens, you know. Um, if you get in a car accident. Say I crashed into you, and I say, you know, you need a paint job. It probably be about seventy-five dollars. Let's just call it a day, and you, you say okay, and we just walk away from it. Well, to a certain degree, that's actually kind of cool. And, <laughs> yeah. Well, I only say that because it it leaves you with you are responsible, and you don't have somebody else just going, yeah, I paid my insurance, fine, let them handle it. I'm out of here. I don't. I don't give you anything now, other than just a goodbye. If we're nice, <laughs> you know, a lot of people in the United States will flip you off. <laughs> you know, I'd hope they get away with it. <laughs> but, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Run. You know, so it, yeah, you just have that sense of responsibility, which is something that. Well, you you were born in the United States, weren't you? Or did you immigrate there with your parents later? I forget. Yeah, no, I was born in, um, it's called Melrose Park. Yeah, okay. Um, hospital in Chicago. Yeah. And, uh, and your father is still a practicing psychologist? Um, he is, and yeah. um, he's thinking about working at Camp Pendleton. It doesn't seem like it's going to go that route. Um, he just turned 59 two days ago. Um, but yeah, he was born a little north, um, and they say in Arabic, Shmel. Um, you know, Shmel also means left, so that's kind of that's kind of strange. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, 
uh, he li- he he was born a little north of of a man. My mom was born in the city of a man, and they were I don't know third or fourth cousins. And you know nowadays it's frowned upon, but they said that that was the thing to do when when it was in the sixties. Um, you know the cool thing to do was to marry your cousin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's come back to that in just a moment because we're going to take our second break. So please stay with us. We'll be right back with my guest, Ramsey Swice. Yes, honey. This is Marlo Wright of mbymarlo.com, and you're listening to K Wave 6 Radio. <laughs> Hi, this is Amy Young of JSJ Phone. We are providers of junior iPhone, iPad, iPod, also Samsung, Sony, Nokia parts and accessories at very good quality and low prices. We sell to individuals and companies have 3 to 5 days delivery time by DHL or UPS. We do delivery in 24 hours after payment confirmed. For more information, see our website www.jsjphone.com www.jsjphone.com Contact me Amy Young mailbox emy at jsjphone.com or by phone 0086-134 one eight six nine six three nine five by Skype E M Y dot Y A N G two zero one two Are you ready to put an end to thinking about how you wish it were and take action? Take this step to find out more by going to coachingbyria.com and you can receive your free consultation session with Coach Rhea. Coach Rhea is a certified professional life coach with a passion to help make the difference in the world. Hello. Welcome to K-Wave 6 Radio with Kirk Spencer. My name is Troy Matheson. I am a polymath and adventurer in arts and sciences, currently working with good people at newearthnation.org. I highly encourage you to check out that website. We're doing incredible things there. Thank you. And welcome back to K-Wave 6 Radio. Again, my guest today is Ramsey Swice, who is a Jordanian Christian born in the United States and educated in uh, University of Jordan, who just came back from Jordan just about a week ago. And when we left off, we were talking about uh, cultural, well, culturals, cultural lifestyles from uh, one culture to another. Of course, we understand that Jordanians have a different culture than somebody in Canada, the United States, unless you're from that community. Um, but we left off where um, cousins, third, fourth, whatever, fifth cousins were popular to do <laughs> back then. And um, that's not where I actually want to dwell on it, but it was just a point of, I know Ramsey's too young to, under, to remember any of this because he wasn't born at that time, but... Uh, there's a lot of what we've seen in Iran back in the 60s and 70s and into the 80s that the Western culture, if you want to say it that way, was actually prevalent at that time. In other words, Islam didn't die, but it was just, this is where I'm coming into the moderate Islam, where they dressed in regular knee-length clothes, uh, dresses for women, uh, they didn't cover the hair, but it was everything was done moderately. And uh, men would wear suits and rather casual clothes, so on and so forth, to compare to today uh, in Iran. And I don't know about Jordan, because I've never really seen too many pictures coming from there. Uh, not that, that they don't exist, I just haven't seen them. But 
how has the culture changed, especially with this resurgence of um, a more strict observance, put it that way, of Islam, as far as you can see? Um, well, in inflation is, is changing um, the country a lot. Um, there's more jobs, um, but the prices are going up. And um, the pay is the same. The pay, like for example, somebody that works uh, five days a week, uh, nine hours a day, would make about uh, four, about seven hundred dollars. Dollars? Um, you talking about Jordanian dollars or? No, uh, four hundred Jordanian dollars, which is okay. seven hundred American dollars. So you're, you're, so that would be about. Um, that's like a hundred out. That's like um, two twenty-five a week, and so that would be about divided by five. That's about forty-five dollars uh, for nine hours. So that's a, that's about five dollars an hour. So that that's that's the minimum wage. So, you know, um, you know, it's better than it used to be. It used to be, you know, you used to work for about fifty cents an hour. Uh -huh. Um. So, but but the prices are going up. You know, there's inflation. There's there's a lot more people, and they don't. And and again, they don't know how to um, evolve. Mm -hmm. They 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 uh, they don't know how they they value conformity, and um, they value. They call them sheikhs in in Arabic. It's basically like a wise man, yeah. and. Yeah, and so they they value. There's a lot of seniority. There's a lot of um, respect for your elders. You know, otherwise you'll get beaten. Um, and so, you know, there's not a lot of evolution. There's not a lot of, as I've said, there's no comedy clubs. Um, you know, you don't see any kind of technological advancements. Um, they say um, there's the highest. The highest use of Facebook is in the Middle East, but also the highest view, the highest view, the highest viewing of pornography is in the Middle East, and as well, um, sesame comes from Palestine, and that's what a lot of drugs are made are made. A lot of drugs come from the sesame plant, like heroin and whatnot, and so they also have a very big drug problem uh, in the Middle East. Um, you know, there's no uh, painkillers are uh, illegal. Hmm? Because, yeah. Even an uh, aspirin? No, no, like, um, like, um, painkillers like Vicodin or oh, okay. Oxycontin, they, they don't carry those anywhere. Maybe like, you know, like in a safe, you know, at one random place. Um, you know, and, and one of the, one of the weirdest things that, one of the things that I do not like at all is that no matter where you go, uh, you won't see it's very hard to see any females um, you know like I said it, you know if a man gets jealous they don't know how to control themselves um, me and you were speaking during the break about how um, you know anger does not mix well with fear uh, yeah anger and fear do not mix well and um, they get this kind of power trip and um, and you know they want to hang on to it, and they end up doing, uh, you know, radical things. Um, so um, I was um, so yeah. The, the two things I don't like is that there's there's barely any women anywhere that you you know in the Middle East is very very hard to spot a woman in the streets. And the second thing that I don't like is that <clears throat> people do not go out until the afternoon, and that's. You know, it's it's pretty uh, until twelve. Two is the hottest point of the day, yeah. and that's that's when people start to go out. And and you know, you, you tend to wonder why the hell people are wearing so much clothing, <laughs> and and the men do it as a sign of superiority over the female race because they come from women, and so I guess their mentality is, you know, um, instead of, you know, there's an American saying that you know life is about going. Or there's like a joke among comedians where they say, um, you know, we we go in the same place where we're trying to go back. You know, we, we come out we come out of the womb and we're trying to get back into, yeah. you, you know, the womb. And, and but but for for, 
in the Middle East. Um, and when I tried to open this my art cafe as a, as a comedy cafe, um, everyone said there's not a single person that said it would work, and that's because not not because everyone's always joking around or because it'd be so successful, but on the flip side, it's because people are so tight assed and there's really no other way of putting it. You know, it's it's just an embarrassment. Um, you know, going back there, you know, and, and and I don't understand why, you know, two o'clock is the hottest time of the day. You don't see anybody until about two o'clock when the sun's beating down on you. You know, people are wearing these hijabs. They call them ninjas uh, because mm-hmm. they do look like ninjas, and it's and it's a, it's a little bit uh, intimidating, and maybe that's why they wear it. You know, um, the women, but the men, they 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 wear like the. Um, you know, it looks like pajamas. You know, they're yeah. just kind of like kicking back. And the thing that to get back uh, to to get to my point is that they leave, they get out at two, and all the stores start opening at two, and they don't really close. Sometimes the barber shop will open at two a.m., whereas in America it's nine to five and everything's nine to five. But it'll open at two a.m. and depending on whenever they want, they will close at about midnight. And it's usually, you know, after things close that people start going out. So comedy, I mean, um, dance clubs were were never a thing when I went to school there. You'd not see a dance club anywhere. Uh, but now it's it's starting to pick up a lot. Um, there's a lot of alcoholism uh, in the Middle East. Everybody smokes. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and I mean, the beers there are like $7 each. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you think New York is bad, and that's 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 Arab, that's Jordanian dollars. That's that's like ten dollars in American, and you could buy a ten pack, you know, and just you know just have a good time at home, you know, have a Kodak moment or whatever. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, so I mean, maybe they're trying to regulate the amount of people that go to the bars. But uh, when I went to a bar, um, you know, there was some some woman that caught my eye. And I wasn't sure if she was messing with my head or not, so I went to go say hi. And I'm not even lying. I, her brother, her dad, and her uncle came and, and kind of did like a, a fort around her and asked me what my name was, what, what family I come from, what I wanted from her, why I wanted to talk to her. Because I told him I just want to, I just want to, you know, just just see, you know, if it's love at first sight. Because I'm a firm believer in that, you know, and just yeah. and just talk and you know and see and just say a hi bye or if she ignores me even that's even cooler you know but why do i have to you know have like a you know like a uh a force field to battle with you know it's really um it's really unorthodox it's really even kind of perverted um and uh but you know i don't know i mean uh, again, I don't want to give them too much hype. I, you know, I want to let them do you know what they want to do. I really believe the answer is um, is, is comedy is is being able to break the ice, break the tension because the tension there is so thick you could cut it with a knife. Yeah. And uh, and every day, you know, I, when I was there for the six or seven weeks, I'm like, all right, you know, something's gonna happen today. You know, this is, this is a war is gonna start. Get me out of here. And I and I and I and I. Uh, to be completely honest, the second day that I was there, uh, the news started talking about this this new phenomenon of ISIS, and so it didn't start until after I went there. Mm-hmm. And and you know, at the end of the day, I, you know, I want to move there. I want the best for my people. I love my people, and I, I I want them to evolve and and become more Americanized or Westernized because that's what they want. Mm-hmm. You know they want it. They want it so badly that they're willing to make a fool out of themselves. You know Russell Peters says that. You know like George Bush or you know Obama is like you know, you know we're going to attack you, and the Middle Eastern people are like okay that that's fine. And and, and Russell Peters is like no 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 you don't understand. You know we're going to attack you, and they're like yeah that's fine. You know because. You know their mentality is you know if you're gonna kill us we'll just kill ourselves, and uh, and um, you know it, it's just it's 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 too extreme it's too they, they, they I mean it, it's so obvious that comedy is the answer because it's funny it's 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 it is hilarious you know but they just they, they can't find the humor in it you know it's like a blind man 
uh, you know, in, in a candy store trying to look for a piece of candy. It's just like it's everywhere around you, you know, just, just you know, open your eyes, you know. Yep. Um, you actually said something here, and it just goes back to what I call the motto for my show, which is your show for all things positive. And you said it more than once. Matter of fact, you just got through saying it. Dialogue and laughter is the best medicine to actually get us on an equal playing ground. It was without talk, without a open ability to communicate. Uh, this is where we're all going to go. Is we're just going to start battling with each other again. It's like, do you ever feel? I don't remember what your degree is, but I know you had to study history somewhere along in, in the university. Have you ever noticed that we as a being, a race of beings on a planet, we have cycles of uh, enlightenment and then cycles of darkness uh, where intellect and everything else is just pushed aside and you must conform to my way of doing things and we're kind of sliding back into that conformity uh, or the conformist way of life versus we have an intellect and we have the ability to make this a better world if we just communicate with each other. Do you feel that coming on or do you sense that? I know you're still young, but how can you relate to that or do you relate to it at all? Yeah, you know, I remember this question uh, last August when we had our uh, first show, you know, and I, you know, it, it just, it comes up to the individual, you know, and it's, it's how open-minded or closed-minded they are. Um, I don't believe that, um, that there's, uh, I, I believe that, you know, you know, every individual can, can open their mind and, and can, I don't think that, th that we're condemned um, I don't believe that there's um, I, don't, I don't believe that there's any condemnation that anybody especially if you believe in individualism um, that they that they are um, subjected to um, <clears throat> and as far as laughter I mean you're right um, I, I just I, I was writing an article I mean I wrote an article um, called um, I think it was uh, laughter is in a state of nine one one, and it was, and it went on to explain that, um, you know, that the, the medical system back in the day for, for uh, over two thousand years, it was based, it was called the four humors, and um, you know, and, and it's a little, and I'm just saying that because it's ironic, um, but uh, it is, it is very medicinal because if you if you laugh forty five minutes a day, which is you know you watch uh, a comedy you watch a movie you know you go laugh for 45 minutes and uh, if you laugh if you laugh for 45 minutes a day you lose one pound a month hmm. and yeah so so it, it you know you lose weight um you know the dopamine levels rise um and when you were talking about different cultures earlier um the one thing that does not change oh no it was called the five angles of humor that was the article that i wrote okay. or maybe it was both um but specifically in the five angles of humor there's only five there's only five reasons why people laugh and one of them is not culture laughter across all cultures is the same you know a, a joke um even if i say it it's it's the it's the pentameter um, like my, I, I work for a gardener and he only speaks Spanish, but I told him a joke in Arabic and he was laughing hysterically. So you know, humor is the same across all cultures. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and that's and that's another thing, another reason why I believe people are becoming less and less racist. Um, but you know, um, I, uh, I I believe. Um, I don't believe I'm the funniest person in the world. I, I believe I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm do, I'm, I, I believe in, a, in a great cause, which is this. I never repeat a joke, um, and I'm in Nashville, and I'm gonna be performing tonight, um, God willing. Um, I, I, I'm gonna be able to uh, have some some time on air, and if not, I could do it. Um, I'm gonna be back here next month, so I could do maybe even one or two shows here. Um, 
And then, you know, we're already subjected to this. Um, I never repeat a joke through through Twitter, through Facebook. You know, when you're in high school, you know, they say in with the in with the old. I mean, they say out with the old, in with the new. Right. You know, um, there's so much fascism, and there's so much um, <sighs> there's so much um, in being uh, popular. You know, there's even a, a really popular song called "Popular" by Not a Surf, uh -huh. and um, and I believe that we're all subjected to not repeating a joke. You know, nobody. You know, when you're on Facebook, when you're on Twitter, when you're on these social platforms, there's nobody that really promotes or um, you know types the same thing over and over and over. Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, they're not repeating a joke, and um, you know. On Tuesday, I find out I'm right now. I'm a semifinalist for an NBC um, Saturday Night Live contest, where they're they're looking to buy rights to uh, the next great comedy show, and I'm a semifinalist. I got an email, and on Tuesday, I find out if I if I become a quarter finalist, and also on Tuesday, I find out if I'm going to be on TV for my journalism. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to ArabDailyNews.com, you see my picture on the lower right panel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm holding a cat, and it says the number one entertainment columnist uh, for the Arab Daily News. And and the only and I work for free. You know they don't pay me. And the only reason why I subject myself to that is because they're so into that hype. They're so close-minded and they're so condemned into. Um, into this re into uh, buying into this hype and they don't understand is that they're inflating the egos of these people of these radicalists and that's exactly what they want you know you don't be had a journalist you know multiple times because you want to be feared it's because they have an ego and they want to be better than Americans I mean that's the bottom that's the bottom line really and so um, and so uh, on Tuesday, I find out if I'm going to be on TV for my for my journalism work. They said it, it's it's down to three people, and if if they do, that they're going to uh, uh, record me writing an article. My next article is going to be about my autistic business partner, who's the greatest comedian I've ever met, and I met thousands and thousands over the four years when I started my mm -hmm. um, this idea of I never repeating a joke, and 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 everybody does it. I'm not saying I'm just capitalizing on it. I'm not saying that I'm the <clears throat> Then I'm the original uh, mm -hmm. founder, or you know the yeah. um, the owner of it. But um, but what what I do in the Arab Daily News is that I take um, I I I, 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 I steward the the sail, the the ship. You know I I I, I direct it. I direct traffic towards. You know, Generation Z towards ins why insomnia and depression go hand in hand. About the freedom of speech turning into the freedom of hate. About the the five reasons why we laugh. I mean, that's that's an incredible article. I think mm -hmm. um, I wrote about um, this haunted coffee house. I wrote about this guy who raps in churches. Um, you know, and, and every time I write an article, I'm like, you know, <clears throat> you know, I'm probably gonna get fired because it doesn't have to do with um, you know, I'm I'm, I'm writing an article. Yeah, yeah I'm, it doesn't have anything to do with all the hype. But I I am writing an article. I I met a Syrian refugee, and I'm going to be posting an article for him. He just wants money, and that's why I wasn't able to um, yeah. publish it already. But you know, he he started a whole GoFundMe, so he's going to have a link to it. But while I was in the Middle East, I wrote 12 articles. Um, one of them was about this ballet dancer who started a contemporary ballet. Um, one of them, uh, you know, and, and, and I wrote 52 articles um, about mm -hmm. ventriloquism, and you know, and I touch on all subjects. And uh, my boss even told me that he that I remind him of Ariana Huffington because I'm, I you know, I'm, <clears throat> I, I cover so many aspects of of news, and um, it's a very hard job. You know, I, I've, I've written two articles a week since I started in April, um, and it sucks. You know, I get very angry. It's hard to sleep at night knowing that I'm putting so much effort and time and love and blood and sweat and tears into my job where at the end of the day it's making me it's making my scent my quality of life worse you know it wouldn't make anybody angry yeah uh, 
but it has a it has a future for you. We'll come back with that in just a moment. We went over about six minutes on this segment, but uh, Ramsey got into a roll, so I couldn't. I didn't have the heart <laughs> to stop him. So I just let him go with it. So let's stay tuned. We'll be right back with Ramsey Swice. We're going to wind up just a little bit. It's actually, he run and so do I. So yeah. we'll be right back, and so stay tuned. Hi, this is Dr. Nick Leroy, and you're listening to K-Wave 6 Radio with its host, Kirk Spencer. I'm a holistic physician. I specialize in women's health, breast thermography, the alternative treatment of cervical dysplasia, and gastrointestinal disorders. And you can find me at drnick.net. Do you get writer's block or tongue-tied when you try to write or talk? Need a wordsmith for a script, article, or research paper? Let K-Wave 6 Productions help you with all of your audio, visual, editing, and language translation needs for your business or hobby. Does the thought of creating a website give you chills? We also have webmasters to help you with all your website needs. Remember, K-Wave 6 Productions. www.kwave6productions.tk Or email us at info.kwave6productions.tk Hi, this is Richard Steinitz. I'm the author of Murder Over the Border, an Israeli detective novel, and Kaplan's Quest, a historical novel with an Israeli connection. I hope you like the books. You can follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, and even contact me by email on richard.steinitz at gmail.com. And I've enjoyed being here on K-Wave 6 Radio with Kirk. Hello and welcome back. Uh, we ran a little over on our last break, or last segment, but um, after this one, we uh, Ramsey and I were talking, we're actually going to do a part two, which won't be too far off in the future. But before we get into that, and Ramsey also tells us about, or tells you about, where you can find him on the internet and all that wonderful stuff, I have two questions I want to ask Ramsey, if you will, uh, to close up today's show. Uh, because you had mentioned this more than once, um, not pandering to the raz- radical Islamics, uh, ISIS, ISIL, and whoever else is going on out there, um, because the more attention you give them, the more they feel like they're really doing it. And this has actually been in some articles in mainline newspapers uh, talking about, well, they don't say it in ego, but they're trying to win a media war. In other words, oh, yeah. showing themselves as being the great ones, and it actually backfires on them more often than not, unless you exactly. just happen to be one that I want to be that way. But uh, that, and also, I, if you want to do it separately or together, but I'm just asking the questions together. Ego, the media war, and Generation Z. So, go for it. Yeah, well, you know, you got Captain Phillips, you know, that's about, that's a true story based on terrorism, you know, and, and, and people look for, you know, people watch that, and that's their 15 seconds of fame. There's that guy, Alton Nolan, who beheaded his co-worker, you know, he got his 15 seconds of fame, you know, Jody Arias, she's getting her, she's going to be sentenced today, she's got her, you know, they're so psychotic that they, that's what they look at it, they're, they're deep in a pit, you know, that, they're, they, they've dug themselves into a hole in their life where they can't get out of, and they start to to fantasize of, of you know of being on the news, and you know, and, and the news, this twenty four hours news sensation, it's it's a new thing, you know, and it's yeah. it is sensational, you know, and and just just yesterday I was watching about the um in I can't remember there was that mall um that mall attack that mall kidnapping or that mall siege, and they were replaying it, you know, and and they and there's all there's these forensic files, and there's all these, you know. I mean, you you do have the true uh, um, uh, maniacs that say that you know Holden Caulfield or the guy from Summer of Sam said that his dog told him to kill people, right. but you know there are people that they they think that it's their way to become famous. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't discount that. Uh... Yeah, well, yeah, it's 
that's their ego talking. But um, now let me ask you this, because of just kind of kind of wind this up. We still have some time for this. How do you see ISIS, ISIL, and Hezbollah, and all the rest of these uh, working? Because the media is saying that that is their way of fighting, along with uh, something I think I read last night, or at least over the weekend, um, is talking about how not only are they looking to work a media war, in other words, look at us, we're just poor people, we're only fighting in pickup trucks, but... Uh, someone who has actually been in uh, military and understands military strategy says actually this war that they're fighting from pickup trucks and being able to anchor anti-aircraft guns and all the rest of this stuff on the back of a pickup and you know, they're able to move faster, quicker and uh, with some of the weapons that they have with the anti-tank guns and all the rest of this they actually have a f way of moving faster, and they have a disposable fleet, if you will. Pickup trucks are cheap and easy mm -hmm. to find. So how do you see all of this working hand-in-hand, hand? especially... I know you're saying that this is just now coming into Jordan, which I can see from my own point of view. Uh, Jordan is wanting to be more liberal. The, the citizenship wants to be more westernized more not trying to copy exactly but to be more westernized and these radical islamic groups are going uh-uh we want it to be the old way so how do you see yeah, all of exactly. this happening well king abdullah and obama they had a meeting and they said you know if if they do breach the borders that that world war three is going to start and you know maybe it has commenced um but I think the problem is, uh, I mentioned earlier that 80% of the population in the Middle East, because um, they say a lot of these, um, a lot of the people that are converting into radical Islam are, are coming mm -hmm. from Europe or, or from Libya. Or, but, you know, Obama is handling it extremely well. And um, I think that um, since 80% of the population is under 30, they're malleable. And they say that I that um, they say that ISIS has two billion dollars in the bank, and so you know when when you don't when you don't have a home when you don't have a family when you see some when you you know there's six hundred thousand refugees and most of them are children and you know when you're susceptible to being brainwashed I mean you know you sometimes you have no other option you know and and you see these people like you said. Um, on armored tanks, and and you're just like, and you, and you see no, you know, no future for your own life, and so you know, they they go both ways. You know, a lot of people that we trained, that the U.S. trained, they converted because they, you know, after the Americans left, they had nothing else to do. You know, yeah, and so, I I believe that it's not going to turn into World War Three. That um, that you know, we've won the war. We've we've definitely. Um, nipped it in the bud, and um, it's just the, it's just the population control. You know, a lot of rich people say, um, you know, you know, let let the poor people kill them, kill each other off, which is the wrong thing to do. You know, I wrote this article, Generation Z, saying how, you know, people with money are are, are irresponsible, and um, they they don't they value conformity, and you know, it's that fear mixed with anger thing. You know, where they're 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 greedy little pigs, you know, and you know, and w when you look at at the pig as an animal, they're, I mean, they they say that they they could choose they could eat a human being in like three seconds, you know, they they even bones and everything, you know, and that's how a lot of murderers get away with, you know, their crimes. They just feed them to pigs. Exactly, so, I've said that actually on other shows. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, th this thing of of, ho of of being so tight-fisted and and stingy and um, um, and um, Control. you know just yeah you know and and and, and just having this hard on for your money um, it's you know it seems like it's 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 a normal thing to do but you know it's it's really not it's it, they're condemned it's it's a reverse way of of living. 
Um, it's a backwards way of living, and they're keeping it in the family. So, like I said, it's it's really perverted um, that they don't know what to do better with their money. You know, there's there's a lot more people lining their pockets, but it's a lot less people. You know, you know these these oil people. They don't just have billions of dollars. They have trillions and trillions of dollars. Oh, you know, yeah. oil oil is in everything, oh, and yeah. so yeah, and so. Um, you know, um, you know, there's no really reason to own an ice cream shop and a radio station and a restaurant and, you know, have it all under one family and to be this big noble, um, you know, you know, like family, you know, as family name, like the Hoori family. Oh yeah, everybody knows them, you know, look, they're on TV, they're, you know, everybody wants to be like them. You know, that's not, that's not... They think that's westernized, and, and they're wrong. It's backwards. They, they'll never understand um, our society until they come here. Yeah. Well, there's an upside, there's a downside. There's things that understood and not understood, even from our perspective. But that's capitalism. It's too... Well, my point of view on capitalism is, it is yes, there is a healthy competition... But there should always be the competition, because even down here, uh, we only have one gas company. <laughs> only one gas company down here. And there's basically, well, there are, there's more than one telephone company, but that sell your telephone companies. And uh, the owner, as has been told to me, as much as I know of it, that he doesn't like the fact that he has competition in cellular phones, even though he has the landline industry sewn up. Nobody can move in here with a landline, but cellular phones, there's competition. So with healthy competition, there are things that always can always get better. But if there is a monopoly, yeah. you set the, the, the limit of what is really good and what can be accomplished. That's the bad part about it. Exactly. But. And there's so many, and there's so much, there's so, there's so many deranged parents. You know, they have a child, and they 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 come to think that their child is a prodigy, and that's wrong. There is no such thing as a child prodigy. You know, you have to work to be a prodigy. And and the the the, the, the wrong thing is, is that children are able to manipulate their parents to make them see things that's not true, and you have kids that are so, that are so rich and are so powerful. And they go around telling people that I'm going to buy your family and kill them. And, and they, they say things that that they, they ruin someone's life for the rest of the, you know, it scars yeah. someone's life for the rest of their, you know, for eternity. It, mm -hmm. it, you know, and, and it's, you know, there's a lot of movies about that, about, the, you know, the lifestyles of the rich and famous and about how depressed they are. And, and that's, just, that's a bunch of kablooey, you know. I mean, to, to go around saying that I'm going to buy your family... You know, and, and, and you know, and, and for them to try to uh, convince them that that's true. I mean, a lot of these people they need to be punched in the face. You know. Let me ask you a question, real quick, because we do have to wind up here. I know you got to run, and I, oh, well, you got to run here too, myself. Um, it, during the Vietnam War era, era, this is way before your time, but during that time, there was something that the Vietnamese used to say, especially the North Vietnamese, and they were saying to Western powers, it didn't come out until really after the war, at least not that I knew of anyway, and uh, it was, we fight the way we do, uh, you know, fighting in tunnels and whatnot, he's thinking about that with, um, was it the Palestinians and in going into Israel and some, I think Lebanon has something along the same lines uh, using that analogy the way we fight is because we have no place else to run to now that may be of true for the Vietnamese because you know you have surrounding countries and unfortunately because of these <clears throat> artificial lines of national uh, sovereignty and all the rest of that uh, instead of just looking at ourselves as just being human beings instead of mm -hmm. oh, this is my territory mm -hmm. um, how do you 
it, can you liken that? Can you make a similarity to that way of thinking to what Islam or the radical Islam is doing? Um, even with the Palestinians, we only have a few minutes, so if you can make that short, we can continue that into our next show. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, you know, you're going to a, a psychological uh, way of thinking, and you know, when you see a lot of um, of movies about people that uh, serve in the war, it, it, they come from broken families, they come from divorced um, parents, they come from, you know, people that have a, a line of descendants that have come from uh, the armed forces. Um, you know, so, so you know, it, it, it's very psychological. Um, you know, they have they have some kind of a crutch where they where they need to they have they feel a need to serve. Um, and you see that a lot in movies, um, and um, you know. So when I, when you say they have nowhere to run to, you know, in Israel, the Prince of Israel was on TV and he was in the war, and he was saying that anybody that doesn't fight in the war is going to be arrested. Um, so I mean, there there is it's psychological, but there is a a, a, um, a touch of you know being patriotic and serving your country. So. Um, you know, you know, I, I, I mean, if I was drafted, I, I, you know, I, I'd be terrified, but I would do it. Um, but you know, it's psychological, and you know, to each his own. And um, you know, when you say there's nowhere else to run, I, I think there is definitely, um, I think that's definitely a lot of truth in that, or that's a good way of putting it. Um, but I would never say that to somebody that served. <laughs> Yeah, well, what I mean in this, and we're definitely going to have to do this on the next show, so I'll leave this as something to whet our appetites for, uh, is talking about is that, well, going back from my earlier statements of back when I was a kid, those who, the, the Muslims that had immigrated to the United States, because that's where I grew up, uh, was born and grew up, uh, there was never a sense of these people want to kill me or they are here to plot our demise in the future there was never that feeling back then mm -hmm. and I'm assuming there still are those same kind of people that are existing through saying I don't want to get involved in all this stuff that's going on over there I just I like it here I have what I want here I want to make this country a better place because this is my home mm -hmm. uh, but in respect to how, uh, well, <laughs> we all know this exists, so it's not like I'm trying to, I shouldn't be trying to pick words on this one. Uh, we know that the influence from other governments and their intelligence agencies actually go around messing with uh, established governments. Mm -hmm. And now it seems to be coming back on them and saying, hey, we just want to be left alone. Why do you have to mess with us? And since you're messing with us, let's just let's just tell you to leave us alone. But if since you don't want to leave us alone, maybe we should just go over there and show you what it is for you to come and mess with our country. I'm going to leave that one there. Wow. <laughs> I'm just going and to that's leave fantastic. That one there. Yeah. Thank you for. Thank you for your time. I mean, you're a scholar and you're a gentleman, and those were amazing questions. And I had I had a pleasant. My, my Skype says um, two hours, so yeah, it was it was a very uh, you know it was a very um, great way of spending my two hours. Um, I agree. I had a great time. I'm looking forward to part two. Yeah. But it's really part three because our first one was last August. And I don't know if you remember, but I had such a good time that I actually mailed you uh, an interna yeah. international <laughs> mailing because you're in Mexico, The yeah. Art of War. Yep, I um, still have it. The owner's manual yeah. right there. You, the owner's manual right there on my desk. <laughs> and um, and I, um, of all... Um, of all radio personalities that I've, because we've never met face to face, but yeah, I mean, you know, we're on the same wavelength, and I'm looking forward to part three. You know that that went by in the blink of an eye. It's, it's a little bit scary, even. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess I, I guess we should close. I should let you go now. Yeah. Well, for those who are looking for this, because he's mentioned it more than once, <laughs> it's actually on the 
uh, your thoughts re- your your thoughts your reality radio that's why I changed the name but anyway yeah it's from August of last year 2013 anyway uh, before we go and before you go Ramsey you can say a couple of words just before we leave and give my usual notes you can listen to the show on iTunes Stitcher podcast.com at the RSS feed and on YouTube all players are uh, computer and smartphone friendly. All episodes are free. And you can subscribe to each one of the uh, media players that you choose. Make your choice and you can get your automatic updates. Um, let's see. We also ask that you subscribe to our website and our blog, uh, which you can find all on our home page. You can find direct links to each player. Uh, from our home page if you have any suggestions and or comments uh, on past shows or even for future shows even suggestions for someone who wants to be on the show send it to info at kwave6 the number 6 radio.tk that's info at kwave6 radio.tk or you can find us on our contact page on the website and if you will please support our advertisers and if you miss them uh, in the broadcast, you can always go to the advertisers page. There's a direct link uh, along with a, a screenshot of their page on that page. You click on their page, it takes you directly to them. Anyway, with all that being said, I know we're rushing things, but we do have to get going. We've gone over time. So, Ramsey, thanks once again. Do you have any final words for us? My pleasure. Um, no, if, if anybody wants to see my um, my show in Arabic um, that was on 9-11, uh, just type in I Never Repeat a Joke. Um, it's on Funny or Die. It's on Facebook. It's on – I have my own website. Um, yeah, what is the website on, address? Um, RamseySwice.com. And Could you spell the last name, please? S-W-E-I-S. There you go. And it's a Z, like a zebra. And um, let me just give that R A M Z Y S W E I S dot com. Yeah, and um, and it's also on YouTube. I have 159 videos on YouTube, 45 on on Funny or Die, and I just published one um, recently on Funny or Die. Um, it was a demon. I mean, it was a zombie, and he's he's basically saying how Ramsey Swice is the great. It's just like video game uh, software that I use, and it, it's a lot of fun. It's, you know, a lot of my videos are, are really cool. I use a lot of clips from uh, classic movies, or you know, but about all of them are, are from a comedy perspective. And yeah, um, again, I just wanted to thank all the listeners um, tremendously. Um, and you know, sometimes I have raffles. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, thank you for your uh, continued support. I. I couldn't ask for more. It's been a wonderful four years, and uh, I'm looking forward to another uh, 50, 60 years of, of doing this. <laughs> there you go. All righty. With all that, uh, we definitely ran over time, but I couldn't stop him. He's such a great guy. So anyway, <laughs> we'll see you for part two. I'm calling it part two, at least on your th- <laughs> on this yeah. particular radio show and yeah. uh, on this subject as well. So anyway... Thank you, everyone, for being here, and we'll see you all again very soon. Take care and be well. Be well. Thank you for being part of our audience. For more information about K-Wave 6 Radio and the services we offer, go to www.kwave6radio.tk. Have a wonderful day.